Hi everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Laura Macar and today I'm going to talk about the books that I've read in the first half of April. But before I do that, uh, yes, I've had a little bit of a booktube break for two weeks now. I haven't really filmed anything. I'm a, in a bit of a weird reading and booktube mood and I don't really know why that is. It's maybe partly because I've been overwhelmed by all of the books. Uh, as I said in my last video, uh, but it's maybe also just the weather and having a new job and etc etc. Um, whatever it is, I'm just letting it be what it is and uh, jumping back right back onto the wagon right now. Uh, I didn't read many books in the first half of April, partly because one of the books that I read was pretty big, and that is... Uh, my Vietnamese pick for Invisible Cities, and it's a book written by Duong Thu Huong, and I read it in Dutch. The Dutch title is The Hemel Boven Vietnam, which would translate to The Heaven Above Vietnam. The English title is The, the Zenith, and this version I have in Dutch was actually translated from the French, for which the title is also Le Zenith, but that was then translated from the Vietnamese. So I have a book that has been translated from a translation and that was noticeable. I had trouble getting into the flow of things in the beginning because I just couldn't get into the language, the writing, and I hesitated for a long time to put this one away and get the French version. But I just couldn't get it over my heart to buy a book that I had access to for free at my library if I knew that the book itself wasn't something that I was going to love anyway, that it's more something that I wanted to read, but not something that would really hit me. Um, so this book is very slow going and very big. And there are five parts to it. The first, third and fifth are about two politicians. Uh, one being the president of Vietnam, who's been kind of put away by the actual power and he's put on top of a mountain and he's reflecting about his life, about his relationship with a woman that he's loved and um, his relationship with his children that he doesn't know and how he got to power and why he's not in power. And the other man is the only man that he trusts, who is also an older man, also reflecting about his life and how he got where he is. He's also reflecting about his relationship with his wife, they don't get along at all, and his relationship with his son. So there's a lot of reflecting going on, there's not a lot of plot to those parts of the books. Um, the other two parts do have a bit more plot. One is, my favourite was the second part where where the story is about a poor village in the, in the mountains somewhere and there's some family drama going on because an old man has decided to marry a young woman and his son or sons are not happy with that. And what I really liked about that part is that the story is kind of told in a theatrical type of way where you've got the choral that gives you the plot in discussions that they have. So the choral is um, just the villagers and you don't really know who is who but you've got these long conversations with people like, oh, have you heard uh, he's married this? And oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, she's pretty, blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of how you know sometimes when things have happened. And I just liked to get to know this village. And the other part of the story that does have kind of a plot to it is about a man whose sister-in-law is the woman that the president falls in love with. And uh, stuff happens and stuff happens. And the man has to deal with things which is all I'm going to say. Um, as I said, it took me a while to get into it. It took me about 100 pages, and then we got to the second part of the book with the village, and then I kind of appreciated it more, and I started seeing more themes going on. I think you'd like it if you like slow books, and if you like books that are very reflective, which is usually what I read, but this time I it was a little bit too much reflection and not enough plot for me, but I'm glad I ended up reading it. Uh, would I recommend reading a book that has been translated twice? No, actually not. I was going to talk about it more in my video about Invisible Cities for Vietnam and um, Equatorial Guinea, but I think I've already said everything that I want to say, so I'll just repeat it in the next video. Another book that I tried to read, spoilers, is this short story collection, this collection of vignettes by the Dutch author Jan Volkers. And this book is Winterbloei. So Jan Volker spent 
a couple of weeks on a random uninhabited island, very small island in the Netherlands, and this is part of what happens there. This, this book, he, it's non-fiction, and he talks about a lot of... It's a collection of vignettes that he wrote about nature. And it's a book that was offered a couple of years ago when you went to the library and got a book, and you would get this one for free. So it's been on my shelf for a while, and because it's about nature, I thought I was going to like it. So I attacked it, I attacked it once again a couple of weeks ago, and I just could not get into it. And only from the first... So I read three pages, and only based on that I knew this was not going to work. So after all of these weeks, I'm finally putting this one away. So the other two books that I did finish uh, were audiobooks. One is Unicorn, The Memoir of a Muslim Drag Queen by Amru al Qadi. This was great. Uh, so it's the memoir of Amru. And in the audiobook they tell the story themselves, well the story, their lives uh, themselves. And it's about the earlier part of their life because they're still a quite young person. And they grew up partly in Dubai and partly in London to a Muslim family. And it's about first realizing that they're rather a effeminate boy um, in a Muslim culture. Then it's about realizing that they're um, queer and what that meant in a Muslim culture with their family, uh, etc. And then it's a and it's also about. Um, and it's also about being a Muslim then in Britain. And the intersectionality between all of these things. Uh, going to boarding school and all of the trauma that went with realizing that your family wants you to be different and has a lot of trouble to love you for who you are. Um, it was very, very interesting. And um, the way they talk about it, really, you really hear that they've, had to deal with a lot and that there was a lot of trauma there and that all of the I could hear all of the mechanisms like psychological mechanisms that you can learn in therapy to deal with these things and learning well ah this came from that and I had to deal with this and because I didn't deal with this that happened um, and I also appreciate what I thought was that discovering drag would be a switching point and learning how to love themselves etc and that wasn't the case when they were discovering drag uh, it was still a very very important outlet but at that point they still hadn't dealt with all the trauma that there was um, which was not what I was expected somehow I expected and that's one of the things that I learned from this book is to be liberated in that way you have to accept yourself uh, but that is not the case. Um, it was a very interesting book to read because it deals with intersectionality and oftentimes books do still kind of tend to deal with one topic when they talk about hey I was different in this way it's it's not always about and this also was a thing this is also a part of me this is also a part of me and the intersectionality is complicated uh, so yeah very interesting I would have loved a little bit more about being non-binary, it wasn't really dealt with in this book, but hey, uh, everybody has a right to talk about what they want. Uh, but I, that's an intersectionality that I would have found interesting to hear about as well. Uh, so if you're if you like memoirs that like this that talk about a life that is probably completely different than yours, then I'd highly recommend it. So the other book that I listened to was Passing by Neil Larson. It's a very short book. I think it's about 170 pages. Uh, maybe even less, it was just a four-hour listen, and it's narrated, it's set in um, the US in the 1920s, and the narrator is a woman uh, who is black but who can pass, she, her skin is so light and uh, that she could pass if she wanted to, but she doesn't, she has the life of a black woman, she marries, she has two children, I believe, and at one point uh, she meets an old high school friend of hers, who has crossed the divide, who because of situations decided that she would run away from what her life was and she would because she also is very light skinned and has light hair uh, and even blue eyes I think uh, that she is black but she can also pass and she decides to do so. She marries a white man and doesn't tell him that she is black um, and her husband is very racist and she also has this way of looking at the black people of the country but through 
seeing her friend again, she dips her toes a little bit in the black society again and realizes that she misses it. At least that's what I understood from it. And she kind of wants to go back because because she is because she can pass, she is kind of she is very interesting to the community. Uh, and they find her lovely, etc, etc. But our narrator, she's not a nice woman. She's she's very um, negative and unkind. But though she doesn't say the things that she thinks, uh, she doesn't like this friend being back into her life and the space that she takes up. Uh, so this book is about their relationship and about what it's like to be able to pass to pass and the risks that you take. Um, because this woman that passes, I mean, she, she, if her husband finds out, things are going to happen, obviously. Um, yeah, it was a brilliant book. The way that it's written is... I just really liked it. There's this way in which the characters were written, in which situations were sketched, that it's a lot of show, not tell in a way that I like. Sometimes I don't like that, but in this way it was like, it had this, to me at least, this kind of murder mystery kind of atmosphere, kind of 1920s atmosphere to it that I really appreciated. And I'm looking forward to talking about this book with my book club because right now I don't really know what the negatives are. Maybe there were some situations that were a little bit uh, extreme but maybe they're not extreme and they're just extreme to me because I've never really thought about this situation anyway if you heard if you've read about if you've read the book if you don't read eh, it's a somewhat older book but if you haven't read it I highly recommend it because there's still something very relevant about it uh, today so yeah those were the four books that I read or didn't read <laughs> uh, the first half of this month um, the I've picked up a lot of other I've picked up other big books so I don't know how much of that I'll have read in the second half of the month. Um, I'll talk to you in the comments. Thanks for watching, bye!